please be seated. Kia ora koutou katoa. So here we are on the third Sunday in Advent, and we come into church with some expectations. Oh yes, the lights are on. <laughs> and my name is Greg, but some things are different. So the chairs are different. We had the chairs in a circle the other night for the talk on restorative justice, because restorative justice processes always use chairs in a circle. What I must just tell you is that the people who are sitting here are part of oh, the open scared now. <laughs> you should see Fred's face. They're part of our Christmas wreath. Here they are. That's right. And we have Athena with us. And Merlene and Nelson, who are the support crew. But Athena, we now regard as one of our whānau, don't we? So it's lovely to see you in church. Thank you. Thanks for playing, Pat. And of course, we have our lead harpist with us, Mary. And here's a Christmas stocking which I've donated. And I've donated this in honour of you. Dear Santa, I tried, really. <laughs> Was one of his. <laughs> the question is, did I try hard enough? <laughs> Into this community we bring our vibrant selves. Maybe we bring questions, caution and uncertainty. We pause in our journey to worship the God who has led us here. Very good. Round of applause for your sister. Thank you. Thank you for standing by in case of a fire emergency. No, we don't like those ones yet. We like those later. That's right, you've done the job. Thank you very much. And so enter a time of joy. Here is God. Very good. Thank you. For where there is life, there is God. There is love. The joy of God with us does not come as naive optimism or surface feel goodness. Joy cannot be imposed from on high. 
joy cannot be commanded. The joy of God with us is mingled with grief, exists side by side with mourning, knows that pain and death are all too real, but do not have the final word. Joy invites our expectation and demands our participation, just as we had many people lighting the candles. Prepare the way for joy, even when there may be sorrow. May joy be birthed among, within, and through us this advent. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And let's read together this verse from Isaiah. Mary is going to read from Isaiah today, and she's going to follow on from this. So we'll just say this first verse together. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like a crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. So today, let's just remember our church family, and it's lovely to see you in church. Lovely to welcome Brian back from Korea. And a big hello to everybody who will be watching a video online afterward. Love to the Fish family today, Paulie. Love to all of you and to Ian in particular, I guess, as you get ready for the funeral of Mary on Tuesday afternoon at 2 p.m. in this church. Now, last week, last week, we came into a blast of noise from God's spell, and I said that I had the sound too loud. That was one of my great mistakes of the week. Would you talk to somebody next to you and say, what's a funny thing that you've done this week? That kind of, if you think about it now, makes you laugh or you might have wished you had. <coughs> I'm not going to make you feel <coughs> the whole church. Let's have a chat with some others for a moment and get a feel for what you've done this week. <laughs> I saw a few smiles and heard a few laughs as you shared stories. I told Helene on Friday I was very impressed last week when she came to do the call to worship. I remember how she stood up here and there was that blast of noise from God's bell. And Helene just was composed, wasn't she? Just waited it out. It was quite remarkable. I thought, gosh, that's lovely control. Now she's shaking her head. But it was good control. Friends, let's pray. Loving God, thank you for the company of other people this morning. We know that there are many people who on this Sunday do not have friends or loved ones near to them. We hold in our hearts those who are lonely. We hold in our hearts those we know to be unwell from COVID, but from other causes as well. We're grateful that we can be here to rejoice with each other, that we have a chance to reflect on the message of Christmas as it speaks to us in this year, in 2022. May this time refresh our thinking, bring us new thoughts. May Scripture speak to us in a fresh way, and we realise that there are insights and the lasting Word of God, which we can apply in our lives. Loving God, we thank you for the children in this church, for the energy they bring. And we know that we are all children at heart. Let us find today something of the child that remains in all of us, and let us make space for childhood in all of its aspects and glory. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. We say, let the children come to me. Amen. So Pauline is looking happy. I like this. I can see people's face, facial expressions. 
Pauline is smiling, so this was Pauline's craft idea that was executed last Thursday at Thursday group. And <laughs> no, I, I was not involved in the craft. All I did was walk around with a basket of decorations and say, "Yeah, have some more, have some more, have some more." And the neat thing is that usually the people who make things at Thursday group take those items away with them, and they chose to leave these in the hall. So there's some beautiful mutuality there. Time to sing again. I'd better turn this lapel mic off. <laughs> now, I want you today, please, really to pay attention to the words in this hymn, because I think it will help us understand the readings. So be still for the presence of the Lord. Shall flee away. 
And then from Matthew 11, verses 2 to 11. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with the skin disease are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look for? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Hear what the Spirit says to us. I'd like to talk a little bit about visions and expectations. From Isaiah 35, I pick up that vision of the desert. Hard to think about the dry desert today in Auckland, I know. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. We said those words together this morning and then we talked with each other and enjoyed the story for children. We prayed this morning as well. And then we sang. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Mary went on to read more of Isaiah's vision as it applies to creation and humans too. And did you notice the words that are the basis of the vision? Here is your God. To help us, I put them in red. Those are the words at the heart of the passage. Here is your God. Right now, here. Just as we sang, you know, the Holy One is here. So waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Isaiah describes a wealth of environmental and human transformations. And I'm reminded that our Advent celebration began a couple of weeks ago with Colin baptising a baby who is speaking to us now. He first talked of water for washing and drinking and refreshment. He took up the bowl, and do you remember, he went right around the church, flicking drops of water on us. He did that, didn't he? Remember the energy? Whether baptised or not, we felt the sprinkle of the water from the one container and knew ourselves to be part of something joyous. And Athena is reminding us, it was my baptism, and I let you in. In the last week or so, maybe you've noticed the presence of God in a circumstance that has seemed bleak or dry. Maybe you've witnessed something blossoming unexpectedly. I heard a piece on the radio this morning about the desert in news reporting around the world. The uh, specialist on the media just used that very word, desert. It's a dry time in good news reporting. 
Are you aware of that? Maybe you thought this week, gosh, something has broken through. This particular story I'm seeing the two sides of. I'm understanding something. For not always do our hearts leap and shout and sing. We experience sorrow sometimes, or the power of love in a form that we know to be grief. It's important that we make time for that experience. As Colin Gibson's hymn puts it, nothing is lost on the breath of God. In other circumstances, our expectations or habits limit how we are living. There's a famous story of a noble tiger that's in a zoo. She had been born there and lived in a cage 12 feet long. She spent her days pacing backwards and forwards, staring back at the visitors who came to stare at her. Well, suddenly, the zoo closed down. And people thought, what are we going to do with all these wonderful animals? We could knit them things, is what Freddie McFlitter would say. But other people said, well, no, the animals should be housed in appropriate conditions for the kind of animal that each is. And so the tiger went into a wonderful reserve, open, rolling ground, very green, and just lots of areas to roam. And the rangers kept an eye on each animal as it settled into its new home. And so the rangers kept watching the tiger. What did they discover? That every day, between 9am and 5pm, the tiger walked anxiously up and down a stretch of land no more than 12 feet. She could go anywhere. She just walked up and down a strip. 12 feet, and she wore a track in the grass as she passed. There were no walls in this new home. There were acres of land. Freedom, you see, was more than getting out of a physical cage. Last week, Jocelyn made a good job of reading the Gospel passage where John the Baptist was preaching in the desert. Thunder in the desert! And I remember how Jocelyn said those words. In today's reading, John is in prison. Put there by Herod, yes, but also symbolically in the prison shaped by his expectations. This wild man with bizarre clothing, do you remember, had been so sure that the Messiah would come with a hiss and a roar to sort people out. There was some pretty aggro language in the version we heard last week in Rachel's and Stitches at the kind of down-to-earth nature of that language. Jesus was going to clean the house and make a clean sweep of people's lives. Anything false would go out with the trash and be burned. Let it be known that church working bees are biblical. He's the basis. Now, now, in the reading today, it seems John cannot believe his ears. And so he sends a message to Jesus. Are you actually the Messiah? Or are we best to keep waiting for the real one? It's rather like all those social media ads that feature prominent people. Whom can we trust is the age-old question. My dad used to quote the motto of the United States. It's in God we trust. And he always, always used to add. Um, everyone else has to pay cash. <laughs> John sends a message with his question. Are you the real deal, he's saying. And in his usual style, Jesus does not give a simple yes or no answer. He shows the way for John to work out his own answer. He instructs John's disciples to tell John what they have seen change in the lives of those who take no offence towards Jesus. John is to gather evidence of transformation and decide for himself. And then Jesus speaks about John. I love this bit. What a great leader Jesus was. He says, well, you all went to see a guy living rough in the desert. What did you expect? 
Did you expect a gentle theologian who would take time to pretty himself up in soft clothes or to tone down his words? Not at all. Don't judge him by your expectations is what Jesus is meaning. Don't judge him because I'm a different kind of teacher and have a different vibe. Jesus says that John is the real deal. Know that even as he's genuine, he has more to learn about the fulfilled life too. And that's why Jesus says, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John's the goods, and he has more to learn. The blind, the lame, those who have a skin disease, the deaf, the dead, the poor. Yes, Jesus cared for those people in those physical circumstances. Not to deny that ministry. In addition, are there times when we might be those people? When we might not hear or see the truth in our lives? When we let expectations or fear based on the past cripple us in the present? Are we even dying a little bit, even in our lifetimes? Do we let our spirits die a little? Maybe we let ourselves become so uncomfortable with who we are that we can feel ashamed as though disfigured. Will we sometimes focus a bit too much on what we don't have, locking ourselves in a mindset that won't embrace freedom beyond the confines of our mental prison? Are we, like John, limited by expectations and confused when they don't play out? And so we present Jesus or God or the universe with yes or no questions, closed questions, the linguists call them. Jesus gives an open answer. Trust yourself. Gather the evidence and make the decision that leads you into the kingdom of heaven. And in which direction is it? It's within. Have a look at this slide. So here's the joy banner hanging in the door of the church. And here's a funny thing that I realised this week. This was not intentional. The first picture is the view from the outside with the bars across the door. Look at the joy, locked up in bars. That's what people on the outside are looking at when they look into this church. Can you believe that? But if you go on the inside, if you go within, there are no bars. And on that side, the joy is not constrained. Isn't that strange? I don't know what to do about that. Invite people inside to see joy on the other side of the banner, maybe. I don't know. So that's something akin to what's going on in the story of John in prison, I think. So I am grateful for these teachings of Jesus, Jesus the way show. For here are grounds for rejoicing. That God is here. God is you might have seen in the examples you thought of from this week as to where you have seen grace in action. A Native American proverb says, give thanks for unknown blessings already on their way. And we can look for and hear God. We can choose to bring abundant God into the dry places of our lives that are set to blossom. Because I think that God is calling us not to be small, but to grow into the fullness of our being. And so, friends, may we rejoice that blessings are all around us, all the time. Amen. And here is a song that we are practising that we will sing again tonight at the Advent Readings and Carols event at St. Adams at 7pm. This is a song that some people will know, most of us uh, do not know this song. It's a, a song about a donkey. And uh, we'll give it a go, and this is a practice for tonight. Okay. Are you going to play a little bit first, Pat? Or yes. yes, Pat's going to play a little bit first, and we'll follow the lead of the singers. And it's got cool words, so just have a think about the story that unfolds of this song.
as they struggle to do what is right and fair in these times. We pray for our community, our families and friends. May the love and joy of Christ be shown in what we do and how we speak. May all the world know the joy of the Lord this Christmas season. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Why did we light a pink candle today? The other candles are purple. Why a pink one? It's lit by Spencer. Why did he light a pink candle? Does anybody know? Pink is the colour for rejoicing, and the purple uh, candles reflect the fact that Advent used to be a time of serious uh, preparation and um, penitence. And so uh, the pink candle was the rejoicing candle. So that's the reason for it, if you've always wondered. Offerings, time to take up our offerings for God's work through this place. <coughs> Let's say together the words of dedication. <coughs> We're thankful for all the offerings today. We dedicate money, online donations, food and time freely given that they be a blessing for those who receive and those who give. We acknowledge acts of kindness, friendship, the gifts of music, sun, rain, and all the natural elements in the biosphere we share. We value the unity which binds us all. For God is in all. Amen. Please be seated just for a moment. We just a reminder about the Advent occasion this evening. And anything else that people would like to share? Any birthdays that we need to acknowledge? <coughs> birthdays? Anniversaries? No? Those are the morning tea people leaving. Those aren't the people running away from their birthdays. Um, okay. Any other notices that you would like to share today? Yes, Dave. Just one thing. And it will be sunny. Okay. Yeah, I, remember, I remember it was sunny last year, some of the time. Uh, so no dinner club this month, but something to watch out for in January. Yes, thank you. Um, final week of Maining Music and Thursday group. Final week of Maining Music and Thursday group this week. That's right. And a little bit of um, party food, no doubt. <laughs> I want to acknowledge somebody today. I often do acknowledgements and emails, and we sometimes do in church, and we are so grateful to our musicians, and Pat, and Grace, and Mary, and Kimberly, and others are preparing for this evening, for which thank you. Uh, but also I'd like to add to the round of applause Paul, because I don't often acknowledge Paul for the depth of the contribution that he makes to the congregation. I see more of this than anybody because uh, quite often he's helping me um, in bundles of my own making and he's sorting me up and uh, actually that's all in service of you so I would just like to acknowledge Paul as well along with the musicians <laughs> and if you think that you deserve an acknowledgement you tell me and you'll get one <laughs> last hymn Hail to the Lord's anointed, we're going to sing three verses. <laughs>
we say together a, a version of the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God envelops us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God is in all we do. Be seated for a second. The kids just want to show us something. There we go. So you you come and talk, and I'll hold it up. Here you go. Tell people what it is. Okay, you don't want to do your things, right? Come on, I'll hold yours. No problem. Gosh, this is amazing. So I made a garden with, a, and it has a little lake with a crab. And there's also a frog hidden somewhere in it, so you can find it. A hidden frog. Goodness. Yeah, I'm never very good at puzzles. Oh, I can see it. I I think I can. Okay, I can see it. No, no, no. No, no. Now, talk about yours. Here, are you see if you can find the hidden frog? (coughs) Bye, everybody. I'll hold yours up. Don't talk. So, um, I built a, a soccer player. Is this the ball? Yeah. Mm. Do you play soccer? Yes. Very cool. No wonder Riley asked me, did we have a soccer ball? <laughs> Show it in the back. Show it in the back now. Okay. It says number one. It says number one. I can't say number one on the back. Look at that. How cool <coughs> is that? Number one. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. Very cool. Thank you. What have you got, Spencer? A laser gun. A laser gun that shoots out love, right? Laser. 